Um, so next on my introductions, I have Jessalyn. Are you there, Jessalyn? Am I saying your I name am. correctly? Yeah. I hope I'm saying okay. No, you, you did. You did. Okay. Well done. Uh, my name's Jessalyn Bird. I'm at the uh, Humanistic Studies faculty at St. Mary's College, Notre Dame in Indiana. And I received a LibreTex grant to help develop some humanities resources, which I did uh, as part of a course called Reclaiming the Classics for a Diverse and Global World. So um, I worked with a student team over the summer. We created um, an a heavily annotated edition of uh, a translation of the Odyssey with a critical introduction. We did the same for uh, the text of uh, Lysistrata, which is a Greek play about uh, women protesting and getting involved in politics, um, which went down quite well this year, as, as one can, could expect. Um, and we're also developing other resources as well to go with that course, which should be up on the platform shortly. I guess the one element that I would have that is slightly different from what other folks are doing is that students who are in the course at present are also helping to develop um, materials that for teaching that will be put up on the platform. Um, they'll be edited by myself and a student team. So they're not only consumers, but they're also going to be producers of OER resources. Uh, in the course. Jessalyn, you want to go next? Okay, um, so I, I got into uh, OER for a number of reasons. Um, in the humanities, some of our courses don't use textbooks at all, but the ones that do still use textbooks, the cost of those textbooks can be prohibitively high because of the number of images. Um, so for this particular course, the, the classics course, it was the cumulative expense of many, many paperbacks, right? And if you're going to, in particular, assign ones that have good up-to-date critical introductions and really good footnotes that help students navigate sometimes really problematic texts, those can get pricey. Um, and they can add up to at least several hundred dollars, you know, by the, the time they're through the course. So after, um, the kind of diaspora uh, caused by COVID, um, I decided that that the electronic text would also give us portability, right? Um, and that if as long as students had Wi-Fi or could download them, then you know even if they did have to leave campus because we're one of the colleges that reopened face to face they wouldn't have that situation where, oh no, my, my books are still in my dorm room. How am I gonna finish out this course? Um, and there was also a lot of students taking a course in the humanities. They're already you know, paying a lot of money for textbooks and other courses. And sometimes that means they buy them late or not at all. And I've personally in introductory courses seen students who have trying to cover up the fact that they haven't bought the text because their grant hasn't come in. Um, so I really wanted to avoid that. So um, fortunately for the classics, there was quite a lot of stuff already available online, but there were some obvious um, gaps that needed to be filled. Um, and that's what led me to doing the um, editions of the Odyssey with the critical introduction. There's tons of translations out there, but they're either really old and outdated and the introductions really don't help the students navigate the text. Um, or, you know, they're, they're copyrighted. Um, so that, that's what guided my choice there. Um, Lysistrata I chose because I'm hoping also some of these texts will also be picked up by um, instructors in the high school and or middle school environment. So Lysistrata is often taught in, in AP lit courses, lit and comp. Um, so that guided my choice there. But I've also, um, I'm working on an edition of the Satyricon, which is um, where we get our word satire from. Um, it's this kind of raunchy Roman satire. Um, and I'm hoping to put that one up as well. Um, and also quite a few documents on the lives of Roman men and Roman women, because a lot of those resources are not necessarily available all in one place, nicely collated. 
Um, I have had some experience in the past in OER texts. Um, I'm a me medievalist by training, a medieval historian, and um, a lot of medieval historians got together pretty quickly, and classicists, it must be said, to put up sources online. So the Internet Archive, um, the sites run by Fordham, and a couple of other places have been around for just about as long as the Internet has been around. But a lot of those texts are not necessarily formatted in the most accessible way. So um, my goal was to try and kind of repackage some of those, make them a little more user friendly, put in some commentary um, to help kind of help students navigate them. So I also include activities, questions, breakout activities, things of that sort, um, so that hopefully instructors can come, particularly those under time pressure and be like, okay, that's a unit that's ready to go and just grab it and use it and adapt it. That was the plan. Do you know if anyone has? Uh, I have not honestly had the time. This semester has been so crazy. I mean, it's just been full, full steam and multiple modalities. But yes, I would like to check the analytics at some point um, and see if, if anyone has, has used the, the modified versions of the text. How long have you been using them? I'm sorry if you already. I only just piloted them this uh, semester. So okay. yeah, this is the first run through. So they are a bit beta version, let us say. I need to go back in and uh, anchor some of the footnotes and tweak the formatting a little bit, but I wanted to run them by the students first uh, to see what they made of them. Great, thanks. Um, hopefully you can see the tab with the LibreText um, edition up there now. Um, that's the annotated and revised version with critical introduction. I called it the undergraduate remix because we also did um, a, a high school remix, uh, which I have yet to put online, but it basically tracked themes um, and approaches that would be more likely to use with a high school audience rather than an undergraduate audience. Um, so the goal there was to not just have the text, but also have um, themes that were uh, tracked for the students, breakout questions, and other kind of enrichment activities. Jesslyn, can you move the page down a bit? It's, it's cut off. Other way. Go down so we can see the entire page. Keep going. Ah, there. You're muted again, Jesslyn. Too much. I don't think I can unmute it. I think, Josh, you have that power. Oh, OK, hang on a second. Yes, I do. Jesslyn Bird. What is? Sorry, is that working now? Yes. Okay, <laughs> the good old space bar. Um, so um, what I was trying to say is I've, I've just come out of teaching for six to seven hours. So the brain is a little shot, but hopefully you can see um, now what, what one of the editions looks like. The Lysistrata edition is also um, up there and I think Laura posted um, the, the tab to that one. So I, I should probably let her go ahead because her editions look a lot more polished than mine do. Mine are definitely beta version, but I wanted to run them by uh, at least one class, one semester first before, you know, smoothing and polishing them and making them look a little more user-friendly. <laughs> 